The normal college life of Finn suddenly changed when he knew that he possessed great power, which was sealed inside his body. Because this power was the reason why strange creatures who took the form of humans and lived among them were attracted to him. One night while the school security guard was on patrol, a girl talked to him. The woman seduced him and he immediately gave in to the woman. At that time, Finn was on his way home and accidentally saw what the two were doing. He continued walking, then he heard the security guard scream, but he ran away from them because he did not want them to see him. He had no idea that the security guard screamed not by pleasure because he was killed, since the woman was a monster and just disguised as a human. He dreamed of the girl he admired at school, named Suji. It only took a few moments for her appearance to gradually change and he was terrified that it woke him up. After their class, he told his friends about his dream. But they only told him to quit on her because he was not suitable for Suji, especially that there was a big gap between the two of them. But he did not listen to his friends, and he was still ready to fight for his feelings on Suji. He did not know that Suji was behind him, and heard everything he said. His friends thought that Suji would get angry and slap Finn, and Finn was also nervous as she approached him. But they were surprised when she asked Finn to accompany her to her apartment. While they were walking on their way to the apartment, Suji mentioned the crimes that happened in the past two days, which one of the victims was the security guard of their school. She added that this was the reason why she was afraid to go home alone. But Finn told her that the victims were all men, and there was nothing for her to worry about. Then Suji said that if that was the case, she should be the one to protect Finn. After a few moments, the reaction on Suji's face suddenly changed, which shocked Finn and made him almost fell. But Finn thought that it might be because he did not have enough sleep or because of what he had dreamed last night, which was the reason why he felt dizzy. It was also the moment when Suji admitted to him that she was also interested in him, and since there was no school the next day, she invited him to go on a date, and he immediately agreed. Meanwhile, the woman named Helen, who was a tree monster, continued her attacks on the victims to fill the mana that she needed. The next day, Finn did not expect that he and Suji would meet in front of a hotel. While he was thrilled with his thoughts of what might happen to them later, Suji suddenly came. It turned out that Helen was also at this hotel with her next victim. Suji took Finn to the clothes shop, and since almost all the dresses she tried on fit on her, that's why Finn ended up spending a lot of money. The next day, Finn immediately started working to earn some money because he lost his savings after his date with Suji. Suddenly, he was terrified when he heard a man's voice asking for help. He knew that the voice was coming from the room in front of him, so he tried to knock on it. Since no one answered, he tried to listen on what was going on behind the door, but he did not know that this man was already killed. Suddenly, the door opened and he saw Helen. Helen immediately felt Finn's strong power, so she immediately tried to seduce him. But because someone was coming, Helen stopped flirting and gave Finn a calling card. When Helen closed the door, she was very happy that she found what she was looking for. After Finn's work, he decided to drink first. He got drunk so quickly that he fell asleep, and when he was woken up because the owner was about to close his store, Finn called Suji to come and pick him up. But because Suji was taking a bath, she was not able to answer his call. Because of this, he begged the owner to call the number on the calling card given by Helen. Helen took him quickly, and she did not expect that what he was planning on him would happen that night. When Suji saw the missed call from Finn, he tried to call him, but his phone was out of service. When Finn woke up, he was surprised to see Helen, so she immediately tried to seduce him. Because Suji already suspected that something bad was happening to Finn, she quickly took action and looked for him. Helen forced Finn to say the word that he loves her, because through this, she could get what she needed from him. After a few moments, they were surprised that Suji was already right by their side. In Helen's anger, she immediately punched Suji, but Suji just blocked it, and she kicked Helen with a strong force. Helen was about to attack again, but Suji got ahead of her and hit her with another attack. While Finn could not believe Suji's strength, but Helen suddenly used her power as a tree monster to bind Suji. And when Helen was about to kill her, Finn quickly blocked this attack. When Suji saw this, she got angry and unleashed her true power, then she attacked Helen which created an explosion. Suji was actually a fox monster who was also a type of creature and disguised herself to live with humans. 
Helen immediately managed to retaliate with a strong attack. Then Suji blasted again, and since Helen could not keep up, she decided to retreat. When Finn regained consciousness, he saw Suji's true form. Because of this, he was able to confirm that she was also a monster. Suji jokingly said that she made a way to be close to him so that she could eat him. After Suji said this, Finn got scared and lost his consciousness again. While Helen fell in a square because of the damage she suffered, she once again dreamed of the day when she would get her human form in exchange for the lives of her loved ones. After a while, a man approached him to help her, but she just killed him so that she could regain her strength and heal her wounds. The next day at noon, the caretaker went to the room that Helen rented for their checkout, but he could not believe his eyes that the room was already damaged. At that same moment, Finn woke up, and he was blamed for what happened in the room. Two days later, he had not seen Suji at school, and he still could not believe what he saw that night. His friends approached him because he did not join them for lunch. They were also thinking that he and Suji broke up right away. But after a while, Suji came and sat beside Finn. She managed to make a joke, so Finn's friends walked away and left them. She invited Finn to have lunch outside, and when they entered a restaurant, Suji gave him a magnifying glass. When Finn tried it, he saw Suji's true form and he was surprised by this. She made him try it again with the others who were there, and it was only here that he found out that it had the ability to see monsters disguised as humans. On the other hand, Helen went to some men at a construction site to start her killing spree again. While walking, Suji told Finn that the monsters had been living with humans for a long time, so he should not be surprised. Since Finn was worried that the monsters might attack the people, Suji also said that there was a low possibility of this to happen because there was an agreement made between the humans and the monsters. But not all monsters follow this, so she told him to be careful from the tree monster or Helen because she sees humans differently. When a construction worker was about to call his companions for work, he was terrified and immediately called the police for help. The police director talked to an expert from the Taoist clan, named Sheba, to solve the increasing number of cases involving the deaths of men. Sheba asked for three days to investigate, and even though they need to be hasty to resolve it, the director had no other choice but to wait. When Sheba went to the construction site, he immediately found out that it was the work of a tree monster by just looking at the way the victims were killed. He called his other companion who had been following Helen, and he was informed that Helen went to Finn's school. Sheba asked for a bowl of water, and after putting something in it, he threw the water in front of the building's door. Meanwhile, Finn continued to search for monsters in their school, and the other students started to feel awkward around him. After a while, he saw his friends surrounding a tree. When he removed the magnifying glass, he was shocked that it was Helen. As she approached him, he tried to run away, but she stopped him with her vines. She threatened him that she would kill his friends if he would not come with her. Because of this, he could not do anything but to obey. When they left the school, they met a policewoman, and although she suspected them, she did not stop the two. Helen took him to the rooftop of a building, and she told him that once she eat him, she would not have to constantly find men to kill because he was special among others. It was here that Finn found out that Helen was the perpetrator of the crimes involving the murder of men in the city. Apart from this, Helen also wanted to take revenge on people because they were the reason why she lost her loved ones. Years ago, Helen was in her incomplete human form with another friend like her, and they were called the Saplings. They both dreamed of becoming human, especially Helen, because she wanted to do a lot when this happened. One day, they found out that a building was going to be built in their place. Helen thought that it was good because they would be closer to humans, but her friend explained to her that it just meant that all the trees would be cut down, and this made them all sad. When the day came that the trees were cut down one by one, the saplings decided to sacrifice themselves so that Helen could fulfill her dream of becoming a human and not be included to those who would be cut down. Helen filled with grief when she found out that her friend also decided to sacrifice in order to save her. Because of this, she was able to successfully transform into her human form. Helen suddenly attacked Finn, but he was able to avoid it. She approached him and tried to remove her pants, but Finn quickly stopped her. Because of this, Helen tightened the plant around him, and when she started her plan on Finn, Suji immediately felt that something was happening to Finn. She made an excuse to their teacher that she was just going to the bathroom so she could go to Finn. Helen had no idea that Sheba and other members of the Taoist clan were just watching them. 
They just continued to observe them, and while Finn thought that he was going to die, he suddenly released a powerful force causing Helen to turn back. Finn could not believe what was happening to his body, then Helen suddenly attacked him. But he was not hurt by this because he could feel a very strong power in his body. Helen attacked him multiple times, and when he had the chance, he retaliated against her. Helen used her power to lock him up, and when Helen got close to him, he just blew it up. This time, they rushed at the same time, but Finn's power suddenly disappeared, and he immediately weakened. Fortunately, Suji came there just in time, and was able to save him. Because Suji showed her true form, Shiba somewhat knew what might happen next. Suji did not expect that she also hit Finn with her power. When she noticed Finn's underwear, she found out that Helen did it, and this made her angry so she immediately attacked her repeatedly. As Helen dodged Suji's attacks, she also released an intense power. It brought out a large tree and surrounded the building that was about to be built. As Suji was about to enter the building, Finn stopped her because he was worried. But Suji still continued to get in the building to confront Helen. While she was looking for Helen, she was suddenly being attacked by her, and because she was receiving multiple attacks, she was forced to use her power too. They continued to exchange attacks until she heard Helen's voice. She suddenly attacked Suji and destroyed the entire building. After Shiba and his companions saw what happened, Shiba decided to leave because he knew who would win in the fight. Aside from that, they also saw what they wanted to see in Finn. Finn tried to find Suji, and after a while he saw a hand. He thought that it was Suji, but it turned out to be Helen who suddenly got up. She immediately attacked him, but his vines just burned before it could get close to Finn, then Suji came out too. Because of this, Helen attacked Suji, and their fight continued. A few moments later, Helen used her strongest attack, but Suji still defeated her. Suji ordered Helen to return the life force that she acquired, and told her to return to her original form. But Helen was planning something else and Suji was not able to stop her. When Helen disappeared, she returned to her original form and many saplings appeared to her. They led her to a door and when she opened this door, she saw many trees. Suddenly, the door and the saplings disappeared and when she started crying, her friend came and immediately hugged her from behind. One day, Finn went to the receiver of the parcels to check if there was a parcel for him and he was also asked to pick up the parcel for his friend. He did not expect that the parcel for his friend was a big doll. Since the parcel was open to be checked, the other students kept looking at him while carrying these items back to the dorm. He had no idea that someone was waiting for him, and this person bumped into him on purpose so she could meet him. This girl's name was Gail, and when she was about to help him stand, she accidentally mentioned Finn's name. Because her tone seemed trying to seduce him, Finn immediately thought of Helen because she had done the same to him before, so he quickly ran away from her in fear and left the box of parcels. Gail remembered the day when her master Sheba assigned her for a mission. She was given a task to observe and protect Finn because they had a hunch that he also had the ability to see monsters. As Gail was about to lift the box, Suji came there and asked her what she wanted from Finn. Suji remembered someone who resembled Gail, and Gail immediately recognized her as the fox monster. Gail did not know that Suji was also a student in that school. But Suji warned and threatened her in case she was planning something on Finn. A few moments after Finn got to their room, he was surprised when Gail also came there to deliver the box he left behind. It turned out that she followed the information on the box and she was able to track down their room. After she handed the box to him, she asked Finn if he could be her boyfriend. But his friend noticed that the box was already open, so he accused Finn that he had done something to his package, and this caused ramble between them. As the two were fighting, Gail had decided to leave the room. A few hours later, Suji and Finn met in a restaurant to eat. He apologized to her for losing the magnifying glass, and only then did he find out that it was just a normal magnifying glass. That was the moment when Suji told him that he was really special because he had the ability to see the true form of monsters. She added that due to the damage he suffered from Helen's attack on his chest, this caused the seal to be temporarily broken. And with the power he released, Sheba suspected that he was the one who possessed the mythic eyes. In that case, Finn's safety should be their priority. Suji warned Finn to always be careful because with his power he could attract monsters. So Finn told her that he met a girl, and he did not know that Gale was already behind him. 
He immediately asked Gail why she was there, so Suji asked what was their relationship. She was annoyed and used her power, causing the water from the glass to evaporate, then Gail also used her technique and returned it back to water, but Suji blew it up. Since Suji did not see Gail as a threat to Finn, she decided to leave her alone and leave the restaurant with him. But even though they were walking back to the dorm, Gail was still following Finn. Even in the morning when Finn just woke up, Gail was already waiting for him. In her desire to carry out the mission assigned to her properly, she just continued to follow him. Wherever Finn goes, she would always offer him food. Even when Finn was playing with his friends, he did not expect that they were also playing with her, and because she good at playing the game, she won against them. After that, one of his friends asked if someone had done their math assignment. They met Gail on the road, and they still could not accept their defeat against her in the game. When she handed out the papers to him, Finn could not believe that she worked on their assignment in math subject. At first, Finn's friends were disappointed with him, but when they found out that Gail also did their assignments, they immediately liked Gail from that moment. Gail also became their classmate and their class representative. From then on, she would always be attached to Finn, causing his classmates to be jealous of him. One day, a squad leader forced Finn to join them because she liked him. When she touched him, Gail came there and used her talisman to blow them up. Because of this, they ran away from them. When Gail was about to leave, Finn told her to stop following him. But even though he already begged her, Gail still did not agree on what he wanted. At night, Gail realized that her mission was difficult. His senior, named Ian, who was currently returning home from abroad, called her and said that she should not take the mission seriously, especially the one that their master had taught her. But it had not changed what Gail was planning, because she also wanted to know if Finn deserved to be treated special. The next day while Finn was eating cup noodles, Gail suddenly came from the window to put sausage on his cup noodles. Then she covered the holes which she saw in the room that could be a threat to Finn's safety. At that moment, she also told him her mission which was to protect him. When Finn asked who ordered her, he suddenly could not move and was paralyzed. It turned out that Gail mixed something in the sausage which was a special anesthesia that could knock down even an elephant. She had already decided to do what she had been planning for a long time to Finn. Suddenly, Finn's friends came in the room, so Gail put something on Finn to make him move according to her will. He became submissive to Gail because he could no longer control his own body. Gail took him to the inn, and the caretaker who was so angry recognized Finn right away because he had not yet paid for the damages the last time he came there. Because of this, he refused to let them take a room, but Gail just slammed the money on the counter, and on his fear of her, he could not do anything but gave them the key. When Gail was about to start her plan, she hesitated because of her conscience, and she started crying. She suddenly punched Finn on the nose, and quickly jumped to the window, which was seen by a man in another room. The caretaker quickly went to the room, and got angry at Finn because of the broken window that he saw. A man came there and said that he wanted to ask Finn for a favor. He took Finn to an expensive restaurant to discuss the favor that he was asking for. When he introduced himself as the manager of the inn, Finn thought that he was going to charge him, but he immediately said that he would cancel Finn's debts if he could help him with the favor that he was asking for. Aside from this, the manager would also pay him, so Finn agreed to it immediately. He asked Finn to wear eyeglasses, and only then that Finn found out that he was also a monster. The manager wanted to ask for help from the fox monster or Suji, who was just in the other building watching them. Sheba also came to her, and they talked about Finn. He asked her if she was not concerned about the dangers that would come to Finn, because it was sure that soon, the monsters would move to target him. Suji answered that they were just weak monsters, and equally selfish to prey on humans because they only think about getting their targets mana. Because of this, Sheba also said something about the past that caused Suji to get angry and attack him. Sheba avoided the attack and decided to leave her. As Finn and the manager continued to talk, the manager told him about his problem with the inn. It was about a crime that happened in one of the rooms the other day. The manager was worried about the possible collapse of the inn and about the crime that might happen again, so he wanted Suji to find the monster who was the culprit of the crime. Finn was not sure if Suji would agree to this, but when the manager gave him an advance payment, he immediately accepted the job. While they were outside, the manager suddenly felt bad, so he went home immediately. Finn also had no idea that Gail was still following him. 
The next day, Finn immediately talked to Suji about the job, but she immediately refused to do it. No matter how he begged her, she still did not agree on it, she reasoned that it had nothing to do with him, and she did not care about the manager's problem. So she told Finn that he should ask for help from the Taoist clan or Gale, for they might agree on his request. When Finn got back to his room, he immediately found out that Gale was there, because of the food that was placed on his bed. He asked her to go out, and it turned out that she was hiding in the cabinet, and when she did, Finn tried to ask for her help. Since Gail had also heard everything Finn and the manager of the inn talked about, she already knew the help that he was asking for. She did not hesitate to help him on this, but because she sensed an abnormal presence of the monster in the inn, she said that they needed to plan it carefully. In the afternoon, they immediately went to the inn to investigate, but the monster also felt their presence. When they entered the building, the manager came out to talk to them, and Finn introduced Gail to him. While Gail was investigating the building, Finn waited in a room. After a while, Gail had finished investigating, and she showed him the plan that she had come up with. Gail had already started what she had to do, so that they could quickly summon the monster that they were looking for. She brought out a magic bottle that contained high-class spirit magic, which released a female spirit that would attract the monster. It was only a few moments when Gail felt the monster move. Because of this, she immediately threw Finn out the window, and she also activated what she attached to his back, so that he would land to the ground safely. When the enemy entered the room, he quickly attacked Gail, fortunately, she was able to block it. Then she used one of her techniques, that caused the monster to back off. Gail immediately followed it with another attack to blow him up. But it did not even stop the enemy, and they exchanged attacks, until he stepped on the trap that Gail had prepared. When he was about to get up, Gail attacked him again and tied him up. Suddenly, the enemy also remembered a woman he had fought before who looked like Gail, so he thought that Gail was that same woman. The monster decided to leave the body of the inn's manager, and it was only here that Gail found out its true identity, as a wolf demon. Because of the enemy's repeated attacks on Gail, she decided to blow up the entire room. While Gail was running away from her opponent, the whole environment suddenly changed. Because of this, she almost got eaten by the demon, and luckily, she was able to avoid it quickly. She continued to run until she was surrounded by many doors which were being controlled by the demon. Because of this, she blew it all up, causing Finn to worry because their plan was for Gale to blow up only one room. Finn tried to enter the building, but the caretaker immediately stopped him. The demon was able to catch Gale, and when the enemy got close to her, it was here that Gale used another type of explosive that she was carrying. After that, she was able to escape and quickly run towards the door of the building. Finn also managed to break free from the caretaker's grip on him, and he quickly approached the building where he saw Gale running towards the door. When she was about to open the door of the building, the demon caught up with her and brought her back inside, as if that incident happened again when the demon was pulling her back. But the demon had no idea that Gale had surrounded the entire building with explosives while she was looking for the exit door earlier. Gale soon activated it all, causing the whole building to explode. It was so strong that Finn who was just outside the building was also affected by it and lost his consciousness. After a while, he saw his memories of his past life. His name was Junbao, and he had a friend named Go, who looked like Gale. They also belonged to the Taoist clan, and they were also with Suji who was one of those who was teaching Junbao on different techniques. One day, the leaders of the different clans had a meeting. It was attended by the masters of Junbao and Go to discuss what the Inshan demons had done in a village. The abbot encouraged them to work together to suppress these demons and restore peace, and all of the leaders agreed. When Junbao learned from his master about the pursuit of demons, he immediately went to Go to make a bet with her as to which of them could defeat more demons. Meanwhile, Suji advised the other innocent demons to stay away while there was a fight going on. The wolf demon saw Suji's concern for the innocent demons and he spoke to her. When the battle between humans and demons began, Jun Bao and Go were informed by Go's master that Go had won the bet between the two of them. Jun Bao's justified that he lost in the bet because of the injury he received when he saved Go from the demons that ambushed her. Due to the defeat of the demons who were led by the wolf demon, he asked his leader for another chance. Their leader gave it to him and this time he was tasked to kill the leader of the human alliance, named Sean. And if he failed again this time, he would not be able to come back to their world. 
One day, while Jun Bao and Go were together, they suddenly heard someone screamed. They immediately went to this person and found him already beaten. The man was about to warn them, but he was suddenly attacked from behind by the wolf demon. So Go quickly pulled Jun Bao away from the enemy. They learned that the wolf demon was looking for the abbot, so Go decided to send Jun Bao home to inform his master while she would try to stop the wolf demon. But he did not agree on what she was planning, causing them to argue on this matter. They were suddenly being attacked by the wolf demon, and they fought the enemy, but he still defeated them. Then he took Go as hostage to force Jun Bao to take him to the abbot. Jun Bao signaled to Go to trust him. Then they head to the cave, and Jun Bao told the wolf demon that the abbot was inside. They entered it until they reached the door. When Jun Bao was about to open the door, he first closed his eyes and didn't say a word, so Go immediately read what Jun Bao was planning, so she also did the same and closed her eyes. When Jun Bao opened the door, the wolf demon was dazzled by the light, then Go immediately took advantage of it and pushed the enemy towards Jun Bao. He immediately threw him out of the door, where the other side was already a cliff. This was the place that they discovered when they were still children, and it was also the same place where Jun Bao repeatedly asked Go to marry him. But after a few moments, the wolf demon was able to climb up, and when he was about to attack them, Go got ahead of him, causing the wolf demon to fall. Go sat down when she weakened, but after a few seconds, the part where she was sitting on suddenly cracked, and Suji felt that something happened. When she was about to fall, Jun Bao managed to get hold of her. Since Go felt sorry for Jun Bao, she decided to let go so that he would not suffer any more and survive. Jun Bao lost the will to live, so he let go too, but Suji was able to save him. He begged Suji to save Go because he was hoping that she might still live. Suji quickly went to her, and when she saw her, she realized Go's true condition and how bad her injuries were. After she saved her life, she went to look for the wolf demon, and when she learned that he was the one who attacked Go and Jun Bao, she took revenge on the wolf demon. After a few days, Jun Bao heard that Go was conscious, so he went to see her. But before he could reach the house of Go, Suji talked to him. That was the moment when she told him the truth about Go's true condition and how much she suffered from her injuries. Although she saved her life with a large magic pill, a part of her soul had lost from her body. As a result, it affected her memories and emotions, so she might not remember Jun Bao, and she would no longer feel the same happiness or the other normal emotions. Jun Bao blamed himself that Go became like this, then Suji said that this was always his fate, that in his every life he would always encounter disaster. When Jun Bao came to Go's place, he pretended to be someone else, and said that he just wanted to see the hero who defeated the wolf demon. Three months later, Jun Bao found out that Go was about to leave the village, so he chased after her. It turned out that Go intended to travel because she wanted to regain her lost memories. A few years later, Jun Bao changed his name to Sanfong and founded the Wudan sect. Wago founded the Amei sect, and they never met again. That was the moment when Finn regained consciousness and immediately asked the caretaker how long he had been unconscious. Because he remembered what happened in his past life, he did not want it to happen again. So when he got up, he wounded his chest so that he could release his hidden power again. When he let it out, Suji and Shiba immediately felt it too. He quickly went to the building to try to save Gale. The barrier created by Gale was slowly being broken due to the power of the wolf demon. When Finn entered the building, he used his old technique to quickly track down Gale's whereabouts. Because of this, he immediately felt her aura. As soon as Gale's barrier was broken, Finn came there and quickly saved her before she was swallowed by the power of the wolf demon. The wolf demon tried to attack them, but it did not work on Finn. Then, he retaliated against the enemy, that's why they were able to run away from him. In the wolf demon's desire to live, he took the manager's body again to serve as his vessel. But because the manager was so angry at the destruction of the inn, he did not let his body be taken easily by the wolf demon. Until the wolf demon forced him to be removed from the body, but after a while, Suji came there. Because of this, she did not hesitate to attack the wolf demon. When Finn was about to take Gale to the hospital, they met Suji on the way. When they got closer to her, Gale suddenly lost consciousness, causing Finn to worry about her. Because of the damage that she had suffered, Finn begged Suji to save Gale, then Suji remembered the day when he did the same before. But Suji just beat him up. Suddenly, Shiba and Ian also came to them. 
Suji asked them to take Gale, and when they left, Finn passed out. When he woke up, he was on the side of the road next to Suji. After a while, the heavy rain stopped and at the same time, the sun rose. So they decided to go back to the dorm, and as they were walking, Finn mentioned that he remembered everything. But he was surprised when Suji asked him which of his past lives he remembered, and it was here that he found out that he had already different lives in the past. On the other hand, Shiba assigned Ian to help Gale in her mission. Due to the incident where Finn released his power, he had been discovered by another group that was also looking for him. Finn had a high fever because of the rain the other night. A few moments later, Suji visited him carrying a dragon tear which was for his fever. Even though he wanted to ask Suji a lot, he could not do it because he was not feeling well. Suji was also with a woman named Lisa who gave her the dragon tear. Suji mentioned to Lisa about her concern because she would definitely not be able to hide Finn's identity anymore. Ian asked a student to announce to the whole school about Finn's heroism to put out the fire at an inn and that he also helped to save a girl. Because of this, Finn was also given a reward. Finn suddenly woke up after hearing this and only then he realized that his fever was gone. Ian talked to the old man who received the parcels and it turned out to be the school principal. He knew Sheba, and they also talked about Finn. While Finn and his friends were on their way to the diner to treat them from the reward that was given to him, they met Gail on the road. She begged him to accompany her because she wanted to introduce him to her senior. They went to the student council office, and when they entered the room, they faced Ian. It was only here that he found out that Ian was the president of the student council. This is the end of the Monster List Season 1. I hope you like it, and give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss newly uploaded videos. Thank you for watching.